This time it's the turn of Microsoft OneDrive for Business and the case of the unexplained. Hi there my fellow YouTubers, welcome to the channel, Andy here, uh, Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft trainer. So nice to see you here and we love it that you've subscribed to the channel and I've got to tell you, almost 25,000 subscribers. Guys, I've got to take my hat off to you uh, with respect, I really do appreciate it. I'm delighted to hear so many of your stories on uh, how my videos are helping your careers and ultimately that's my goal, that's why I'm here. Now, a little while ago, uh, in fact, quite a long time ago, I did a session on OneDrive for Business. And I realized, you know, the product's gone through quite a number of changes since then. So I thought in this episode, we're going to take a look at the case of the unexplained. What happened to the OneDrive Admin Center? Where did all the settings go? And ultimately, uh, what are the tips and tricks that you can find in the actual OneDrive product itself? So if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, don't we? Hit that subscribe button up there, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on future tutorials. And of course, if you've got any questions about this or any of my other sessions, then just get them down below. Or of course, you can subscribe to my Discord channel as well, and I'll put the link for that in the video. All right, so I think without any further jibber jabber, I think it's about time we got to the demos. Let's take a look. So to take a look at OneDrive, what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to come into Microsoft 365 and into Active Users. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm going in here. I've got a user here called Alan. Let's have a look at Alan's account. Now, just one thing to note, um, Alan has a OneDrive. So before we used to have the OneDrive Admin Center, and that, of course, doesn't exist anymore. But you do have access to... Alan's details. So you can see, you can get access to files, so you can create a link to view Alan uh, de Young's OneDrive files. Now you're probably thinking, oh, hang on a minute, what about the security aspect of that? Please note that only certain users or certain groups would be able to do that um, for security reasons, all right? Now, um, also here, you can see that every user gets uh, a terabyte of storage. I'll come back to that in a second. So the other aspect, of course, is external sharing. And you've got three options here. So you can allow sharing to any authenticated guests and users with invitations, uh, allow to anonymous guests and authenticated guests, and only allow to sharing with existing guests, which currently exist in your Azure Active Directory. So that's really important. So let people outside of your organization access your site. Now, of course, we're talking about OneDrive. And do remember that OneDrive is hosted in SharePoint. Technically, it's on the same platform. So I'm going to just accept that. One other thing I just want to mention um, in here, OneDrive settings for your organization. So you can see you've got a data retention here. Again, depending on your plan, you can extend this as well. And you can also manage the default storage for this user. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, what happens if I delete a user? So if you delete a user in 365, what's going to happen is if the user is an active user, the user's data is stored in OneDrive, one of the options here is to give another user access to Alan's OneDrive for 30 days. So when the account is deleted, it goes into a recycle bin and that recycle bin's data will be available for a user. So if I have a user called Megan, um, I can add in Megan and she will get access to that OneDrive for 30 days. All right. Likewise with things like email, if you want somebody to access Alan's email. So that's a really useful uh, feature there. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to come down into the SharePoint Admin Center. And as I mentioned earlier, we used to have a OneDrive Admin Center. So what Microsoft have done is they've um, 
brought those settings all together now in one place. Um, so for that, we go into settings in here and you can see that we've got the SharePoint default settings here and we've also got the OneDrive settings as well. Um, you can go into notifications. So if you want to allow notifications, you can switch that on. And very importantly is retention. Now, if you notice this, days to retain or a deleted user's OneDrive. So once the user's uh, OneDrive has been deleted, by default, it's for 30 days. But check it out. Look, you can actually extend this. And as I've said in previous videos, two things happen to your data while in OneDrive and SharePoint and in 365. It's either deleted or it goes into a, a retainment process or archiving process. And you can control that. Now, again, depending on your plan, um, you may have this option. Uh, and I think, what's that, about 10 years, something like that. So again, for compliance reasons, that is really, really useful. So just to say you can change that uh, if you want to. And then I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Now, this is the really interesting one. By default, as we know, every user has got a terabyte of storage. Um, but did you know that you can actually extend this? Check it out. You can actually have up to five terabytes of storage. Five, one, two, zero. So you can increase that, increase your user's storage to five terabytes. Please note that you do need to have an enterprise plan for this. All right, so an E3 and above, uh, you will get access to that. If you've got a small business plan, I'm afraid you're still limited to that uh, terabyte. Um, so the other thing then as well is the sync option here. So again, you could almost look at this as security settings. So do you want to show the sync uh, button on the OneDrive website. So if you've downloaded the sync client on your desktop, then it will sync those files for you. Um, very useful, only sync uh, computers joined to specific organizations or domains. So again, you could put those domain names uh, in here for that. Um, block uploads of specific file types. So, you know, if your users are trying to upload movies and, and music and things like that, you might not want to allow that because this is OneDrive for business, of course. Now, uh, we've got some very useful articles here. So these take you to docs.microsoft.com. So definitely go ahead and check those out. Now, I'm often asked, Andy, what's the difference between OneDrive, the storage limits here, and the SharePoint storage limits? Well, SharePoint, um, basically when you create a SharePoint site, um, you've got 25 terabytes of storage, and that's for the site. Um, and you can obviously let Microsoft 365 control that automatically, or you can manually let your users um, uh, control that um, storage. So to do that, I simply click on save here. And if I go into sites and active sites, and if I just scroll down, I've got a site here called Oslo Students. And if I click into the site here, you can see that I've got a storage limit of 25 terabytes. But look, it now allows me to customize that option. So if you, you know, for example, if you want to customize this, uh, again, it can be really useful and it will let your owners know that you're running out of space. I think most people would want to just leave that as auto, but needless to say, a very useful feature all the same. So one other aspect of OneDrive, of course, you can find in your OneDrive tool. So I'm just gonna come into my various apps here and I'm here in my OneDrive platform here. And I, again, if you want to share a document, if you want to, I'm sure many of you know this already, but you can get a little preview of the document. You can see it gives you a little preview. I can also go ahead and share this document out if I want to. I can see the details on this document. Uh, you know, it gives me the, uh, a little preview with the details. 
um, the activity, what type of file it is. So you get to see all the metadata along with a preview of it. So that's quite useful. Other couple of things as well, you'll maybe notice that up here, you can now got a power automate. So for example, you can very quickly convert a, any document to be a power so you can now convert any document to be a PDF very quickly and you can set up an automation. So for example, if somebody sends an email with an attachment, you can automatically save that attachment into OneDrive. Um, other things that we've got here, you can also switch on versioning history as well. And this is a classic SharePoint tool. So if you're working on presentations or uh, reports and you want multiple users are working on them, then of course that, that's quite handy. The other thing that we've got, of course, is the ability to share content as well. And uh, again, you can choose um, what level of permissions that you've got. Now, you'll notice that it's picking up the permissions from SharePoint. So in the SharePoint sharing policies, these are my default tenant permissions. So at the moment, I've switched off any, anybody with this link. So it's only, for example, with the existing guests. And you can then specify, can they edit, can they review, or can they just view only? So they can suggest changes. So the difference between can edit and can review and also can view is just obviously read only. So one of my favorite features is the ability to not only say uh, who can edit it and so on. Um, in this case, um, for example, this tenant allows sharing with anyone with this link. So this is called an anonymous link. Now, although this is very useful, I might say, you know, I only want you guys to be able to view, but a really cool thing here is you can also set an expiry date on this. And this is great because there's nothing worse than sharing files. And then you suddenly realize, oh my goodness, they still have access to that. And um, also it's a very good idea to be able to set a password as well. And I love this feature, the fact that you can block downloads. So you can give users access to a file, but they can't actually uh, download the file. I love that. Now, as well as those settings, the last thing that I want to just mention is a really important thing. Uh, of course, users delete their content. And when you delete the content, of course, it goes into the recycle bin here. So here in the recycle bin, you can see I recently deleted an item. Now, of course, within 30 days, it's really easy just to click and restore that item. But what happens to that item beyond 30 days? Well, you'll see here, can't find what you're looking for. Check out the, recycle, the second stage recycle bin. So it's a feature of OneDrive for Business and also uh, SharePoint uh, document libraries that basically you, we've got two stages of recycle bin. So as I've mentioned, your data is either archived or it's deleted. If it's deleted, it goes into the first stage recycle bin for 30 days. Beyond that, it goes into the second stage recycle bin for 63 days for a total of 93 days. So this is, of course, unless you've changed your settings in the OneDrive settings in the admin center for how long it retains that content for. And of course, if you put a uh, unlimited retention policy on it, or if you place your user on litigation or legal hold, then that data could be potentially held indefinitely. So there you go. Uh, just a couple of useful tips. So there you have it, OneDrive for Business. That is so cool, isn't it? Hey, listen, if you've not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button up there, ring the bell, and you'll be notified of future videos uh, to continue your learning careers, okay? And if you've got questions, comments, or feedback, then of course, just get them down below. All right, that's it for this week. You stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.